Hello there guys, my name is Jay or DA and welcome back to another Old Norse Shipyard build video where today we're looking at something that I haven't particularly built ever before and uh, it's something that a few of you guys have mentioned to me over Steam when I've sort of chatted to a few of you guys and uh, you guys have been like suggesting tanks and armoured vehicles and stuff like that and I haven't really done a lot of them because I'm not very certain on wheels in Space Engineers and uh, I'll probably show you one in a little bit but um, just to point out to anyone that does want to download this um, because it will be available on the Steam Workshop when this video goes up this is in dev, so you won't be able to open it in a normal, uh, stable version of Space Engineers. It is in dev. I currently work in dev a lot of the time because a lot of the mods I use work in dev. So um, please be mindful of that. But uh, yeah, so this tank that we are heavily surrounded by, to be honest at the moment, is called the Cappy. Now, Cappy in Old Norse basically means champion. So this is the champion tank. This is my sort of first in production sort of tanks that I've again ever built and uh, it's a non-tracked vehicle, it does rely on wheels and that is because if I did have tracks it'd be very over complicated and very cumbersome. So I went screw that complicated nonsense, let's just go with something that I know will work and that is wheels. Now I have had to put wheels on the front and on the back so it enables its off-roading capabilities to be a bit better when it goes up hills, down hills and through holes and stuff like that. Um, and I've been trying to tweak around with the uh, the way it sits on the floor because currently it's a little bit low if you've noticed. The trouble is if I raise it up it means the wheels are more exposed but uh, I'll, I'll sort of show you that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, the outside is very much a soft shell, so it is all just regular armour blocks for most of it. And then in the critical points I have actually put heavy armour. So on the front here we have heavy armour just in case it takes any direct hits. Sides have got armour on them as well. So this basically means that if it takes hits from the side it will potentially deflect a bit more of the fire. And then on the rear as well we have put some armor but not a lot um i i did struggle because having a door into a tank is quite tricky and uh a lot of the doors well most of the doors are like a five by five square grid and they're ridiculous to place on stuff so i ended up having to try and make something from this however i think in in the future if i were to ever build another one like a bigger tank uh, like a mammoth tank or something i'd probably put the hatch on the top because it really does allow for um, a lot more protection because currently this isn't the best protected I know but again it's like a cheap and cheerful um, doesn't require too many people sort of tank which does work to be honest I, I like the way it works and you can man it with just one person and be quite effective with just one person piloting it so uh, yeah the internals we do have three seats and this does sit three people and um, you'd basically have one pilot one gunner and then one sort of general ops person that is designed to keep the ship operational now as we walk in we do have if i just uh, make sure my lights off we do have a door the door is controlled by the pilot so he opens and closes it whenever um, we then have uh, these four batteries in here because this thing is solar powered if you haven't already noticed um, so what happens here is we have two backup reactors that are tucked away in the craft quite nicely and uh, those are just in case you ever do need them but most of the time this thing will be reliant purely on battery power that will be charged up from solar panels because of course it will only be used on planets so I like it I like it it's very cozy in here I've sort of tried to go with a minimal sort of widths for everything because again it's just it's trying to get everyone to be able to fit in here and you have to have this walkway down the center but again if i were to redesign this i'd probably have a back gunner that could shoot behind you as well as you know have something firing forwards and then maybe have a hole in the roof that you can get out of that is like i don't know like a three by three opening that you can easily sneak out of but uh yeah so this is the internals we have the two seat like two seats on the sides for the other two sort of uh, people to work in and everything now behind this um if i were to try and hover you'll you'll probably pick up on the fact that, uh, that there is a um reactor behind here there you go so there are reactors up behind here so you just got to basically grind those out to refuel them it's a bit of a bother but again you don't particularly need to use them that often because again it's battery powered so that is really if your batteries are damaged or something like that now the pilot seat it's quite gloomy back here because all you're doing is staring at a screen 
But uh, what you actually have here is you have a radar. Now the radar doesn't work particularly well at the moment because I can't seem to get it to pick up on people or other crafts. Um, as you can see there is a large amount of these crafts outside with a, a few buildings and it's not picking it up. Um, yes I've tried everything and it doesn't seem to work that well. But it looks cool anyway just spinning around like it does. It'd be really cool if it could work because I do want to try and battle these and maybe get Robin and Jeremy involved to battle these soon. And it'd be cool if I had that working but either way if that's not working we'll just deal with it I guess. So uh, yeah this is sort of the internals. The main weapons on the outside is uh, we have the main turret which is con uh, consists of a missile pod which isn't reloadable from the internals of the craft so you do have to sort of stockpile rockets in there and then use them up and then you'd have to come out and replace them and everything but the turrets on the top do have some sort of storage device um, on the back end so you can re sort of uh, supply the turrets so the turrets could sort of act as a um, deterrent for the enemy while you're reloading which could prove useful and again it swivels full 360 so you are capable of still defending the craft even without rockets however you, your sort of damage per second will be very much diminished because the rocket pod does deal a lot of damage to whatever it sees we then have two forward firing machine guns which again are just for the pilot's use really it's just you know the use at his discretion if there's a building start laying into the wall and you know trying to take out bits and bobs of the wall before you hit it uh, you can use them on, you know, as anti-personnel sort of deterrents and stuff like that, and it it does work fairly well, to be honest. And I like it. My only, again, my only gripe, as I've been stating, is I wish I closed off the back end and maybe had it a bit longer so I could put some sort of um, hatch, sort of access hatch to get inside, maybe. But other than that, that is that is really it. I mean, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how it drives and how it rolls. Now, due to Space Engineers being its buggy self, um, the wheels do wobble around a little bit, and uh, Dev really doesn't make that any better. So we can start driving here. Now, the wheels are set to only really travel at 50 meters a second, or, well, sorry, kilometers an hour, because uh, it's, again, it's not the most stable craft, as you can see, as I'm driving around, the, those wheels are properly jiggling off of their, um, you know, off of their sort of stands and it does get quite a uh, hairy um, also friction doesn't particularly work that well in development at the moment so it doesn't particularly stop that well if you hit P um, depending on where you are and what sort of surface you're on it does slide around a little bit I don't know whether that's intentional from Keen but I don't recall an update stating that ice and sand are a lot more slippier than other stuff so this is the issue right here I stopped on a hill and it is now sliding backwards this is this is a real issue for me in this build because just trying to park things is ridiculous. And uh, if you down the friction on the wheels, it just causes this thing to to get worse, um, obviously. But then if you drive it onto a uh, onto a ship or something like that or a flat surface um, using blocks, what happens is is it's it, it gets really sticky and starts to stick to the surface which doesn't make sense and I think they need to really fix that because it is a little bit bugged at the moment but that is just me so what I'm going to do is I'm hopefully going to try and aim at that camp down there if I can with the turret um, again what we have here is we have a few controls we have the guns sort of firing on and off on the front so we we can just control them to, to shoot non-stop and stop and start and whatever um, we then have the camera on the front, which does make everything a little bit easier to, to pilot, but of course that may get shot out pretty instantly if you were to take a direct hit or if it was to take a few bullets. And then of course we have three, which is the rocket launcher, which does fire our lovely rocket launcher on the top, which we do have control over just in case we need to be firing the turret. Um, so we also have controls for the back door, which we can close, and as you can see, it's closing up quite nicely, and that just makes sure that other personnel can't get in again those could be shot down quite easily and it's quite a weak point so I really need to try and get that sorted um, and then if we hit 8 we gain control of the turret now the turret only has sort of one axis of the right well, can go anti-clockwise and clockwise but it can't go up and down I'm still yet to figure out the up and down movement on such a condensed sort of craft um, I have saw a few ideas from like a vertibird design and stuff like that which shows you a turret that can move in all axes but 
I want something that's that I could just drag around with gyroscopes and not have to worry about. So I'll have to figure out something with that maybe for the next iteration of this. But uh, either way, let's, let's have a go at this turret. Now, the turret, depending on... I've actually got two gyroscopes on this, but it doesn't seem to move any quicker than it normally would, which is a bit weird and a bit annoying. Um, but as you can see, we do have control over the turrets here, and then we do have control over the tank turret, which, of course, you can zoom in on and target a bit better um, you have to turn the turret on well, the uh, the rotor on and off to allow it to turn appropriately but uh, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna lay our like sort of get ourselves into a alright position to try and take on that camp if I can um, I think what's the best thing to do is if we get the turret control here as well in view we can see exactly what we're doing okay that's fine so if we hit P we now have control. Now we are actually, actually turning the body of the uh, the whole craft here. But what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the remote control. We're going to go three, and uh, as you can see, it's not actually in the right position. Apparently, yeah, it's just a bit low. So again, it can be a little bit frustrating, you know, piloting this as one person. And I would say get two people in on this craft. But um, if I go V, um, I should go T. Sorry. If I gain, if I bring that turret back round and allow it, so if I just bring it round this way, um, actually see if that turret's actually turned appropriately or not. This is another thing, I'm not sure what is the right uh, sort of turning circle. And again, I've never built a tank, so this as a first iteration is, is going to be a little bit janky, a little bit hard to control. But as you can see, we are sliding. If I hit P, um, I don't know what I just did then. But uh, I am hitting all the buttons right now and it doesn't seem to want to stop. Which, again, very, very annoying. So if we go 6, we can gain control of the, this Minecraft. Hit P, and we can drive. And we'll just drive up and take a few shots. Ugh. Again, this is where that, that sort of secondary axis is required. Oh, Took a heavy hit there, didn't it? Jesus. Oh, yes. Just gonna nail them with a th with just a few, just a few. He says as he can as continues to fire at them with everything else. And there we go. So if we hit handbrake on this, um, again for some reason in Dev we jump out and you're in the other mode, which is a little bit weird. I'm just gonna let that keep sliding towards us because why the hell not? I, I can't particularly stop it. We actually put a quite a few holes in here, and uh, as you can see, um, the tanks are taken quite a bit of damage now again rocket hit could potentially be very lethal but this one actually took it quite well it's still operational uh, still has a gun um, but the turret is pretty much wiped out and uh, the pilot seat's actually intact which is quite good so you can still actually drive that and uh, still actually drive quite well in fact let's give it a go and let's get it out this hole so uh, let's hit P let's get it out this hole uh, it may be a little bit wobbly uh, uh. I think that's mainly because we've not got really any traction on the one side yet because there's a big hole here. But just with a bit of finicking, a bit of... Uh, oh, oh god, you can do it. You can do it. Just push. I think it's stuck on the building. Yeah, it's fairly wedged. Let's reverse. Uh. I think our wheels are slightly damaged as well, which doesn't particularly help the matters. There we go. A bit bouncy. But, uh, yeah, I think our wheels are a little bit worse for wear because uh, the, sort of the power is sort of diminished in it. And uh, being as we've lost quite a few power blocks or whatever, I think it's not faring the best. We just took a hit. It's still moving and again just with a little jankiness here we go we're okay now we can sort of drive it around and uh, zip it around the battlefield quite nicely um, we still have the front camera as well so we could drive this around as as we wish like this and uh, just just get on our way now of course there may be slight tweaks required to the craft for different sort of scales of hill because um, being as the being as the speed has been diminished quite a lot with it being 
put down to 50 kilometers an hour it means that it can't really put too much traction on on the surface and the friction is quite low as well because of bugs at the moment but i'll probably change them a little bit before i release this just so they're a little bit more sticky and a little bit more reactive because currently with a slower speed it's not the the most reactive craft in the world but that is what i found works but uh, either way, so I hope you guys have enjoyed looking at the Cappy Champion tank today. If you have, go and check it out on the Steam Workshop. The link is provided below in the description to check it out. I know there are a lot of flaws to it. I know there's a little bit of bugginess and jankiness in its design. But I will hopefully get better at building these as time progresses if I do decide to build some more. If you guys have enjoyed me showing this off and if you enjoyed the sort of design and everything give me some ideas for more tanks give me some ideas on how i could sort of maybe utilize the rotors a bit better and uh, yeah if you've enjoyed this video please like favorite and of course subscribe for more and i'll see you guys later peace